Hey everybody, Scoutcrafty here again. TGIF. Yeah, I know. It's Friday. You made it through another week. This is a rough week, I know, for a lot of you. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm kind of looking forward to, <laughs> to, I guess, the end of April, you know. And hopefully to, we, we will have peaked by then and be on the downside of it, you know, looking back. But you just take one day at a time and you enjoy your days as you can. I'm in the shop. I'm loving it. Just got down here. A um, couple things I want to talk about today, maybe make it into a little bit of a mosh. First thing I want to talk about is we just did that uh, Tremo uh, uh, wrench restoration, you know, and um, I know that a couple of you had said, you know, hey, I have one, I have a different size, but I think I have the whole set, and I, there might have been like eight or nine or ten of them. I have, I think, every size. Let me show you a couple, too, I just found when I was uh, digging around for today's project. Uh, let me show you these. Okay, these are uh, just a couple of the other uh, trim. I must have, like I said, I must have a dozen of these in all different sizes. These happen to be two 12 inch models. And what's interesting, I love when you get different wrenches because you could see the manufacturing process, how it changed over the years. Like for example, if you notice right away the difference on here, you could see there are subtle differences. Like for example, you see how drop forged is stamped closer to the end here than it is over here you see there's a gap here so you know it was different years of manufacture or whatever you, you and certain things would change but uh again they were all stamped here if you notice they're all stamped with the same patent date of uh december 19th you can see here december 19th 1911 so um every one of these tremos use that same patent but what uh, what happened was they made them in different sizes or scaled them up. Now, uh, the joy of having something like this, as you can see, is when you have a bunch of these wrenches, you can do them in different co color combinations. This one here, again, these are done from the factory. So this one here came out in a kind of an all red. You know, some of the other ones were black. And so I guess they had different color combinations. You can see here, there was some color in here. It looks almost like a bluish. Can you see that color? Is it showing up? There is almost like a bluish, grayish blue paint. So I'm sure they came in different colors in different years and, you know, anything to try and kick up the now, sale. Now, for today's project, I want to pick out something pretty nice, uh, something special because it's uh, Friday. Uh, I figured an axe would be good. I felt like doing an axe today and uh, God knows I must have about 50 hand axes because uh, being a scout leader for so long, I had to make sure the boys all had an axe when we went to do our totem ship and whatnot. So, uh, but there are some axes that are more collectible and more desirable than others. And uh, today I want to do some, uh, a nice one from about 1956, but let's check out some other ones I have. Uh, and I think you'll find it interesting. Now, when it comes to any kind of striking uh, tool, I always like a wooden handle, but the, a lot of times we used to use these uh, steel type handles in the scouts because they were durable and you know, you know, boys can overstrike or something and snap off a, a, a head like nothing, to, like <laughs> like nobody's business. But uh, these were actually official. A lot of them were official scout axes at the time. Uh, here we have a, a a true temper, and you can see the official scout logo here. See that there, true temper. And a lot of these, when they were uh, kind of marketed towards a civilian uh, market, they would come out as a uh, a rocket. Uh, something like this here. We have a uh, true tempered jet rocket uh, axe and you can see here It's a very similar, you know with a little bit more of a shape on here But these these rocket axes have become quite popular over the years, but um a lot of times uh, Like certain ones like this here these uh, bridge ports they were made for years and um, They were a lot of them were made in Germany like this one here uh this one here is made in Drop Forge, Maine, Germany. The Bridgeport ones obviously were made in Connecticut, but um, here we go. This one here says uh, West Germany. You can see over here, uh, made in West Germany. So a lot of these you'll see in Germany, uh, they made the same exact ones in Bridgeport, Connecticut, but I did a restoration on one of these. These come out real nice. Uh, you know, fun little project to do, but um, let me show you an axe you probably never seen. Now, for you axe connoisseurs, here's something I probably I think a lot of you probably haven't seen before. Uh, this is a folding axe, and uh, Richard Petrich in 1997 invented this, and uh, it was selling at like REI and places and camping places like that. It almost sold for like $40. You know, it wasn't cheap. Made in the USA, you could see here. 
and um this was actually a heavy duty it wasn't a gimmicky axe but you know it's just folding axes a gimmicky just the way they are let me show you how it works uh you pull this uh, little lever open like this and then you open up the axe like this and when you do and you you clamp the, the handle down that'll lock the handle in place this is supposed to be good for 1200 pounds of force you know that handle so uh it is very strong then there's a little retaining pin here your spring action you see you just open it up like that it locks in place it's a uh a high carbon steel and it's a good quality steel this piece anyway and it was supposed to be a heavy duty i guess he was trying to get a military contract but you know there isn't a big market for folding axes things like that but uh it's a pound and a half they say with the you know packaging but uh it's it's an interesting tool it uh i only have uh, limited use with it because you know i didn't want to mess it up i bought it kind of these things are expensive on on ebay if you go to look at them and you know for what they are, you know, as far as uh, I could never let the scouts, they would tear through this like <laughs> like nothing. But I just thought you'd be interested in seeing that. And then uh, again, to uh, to fold it back up, you pull this handle out like this, you know, you uh, retract the head, you pull that little pin down, pull the head like this, and then fold it up like that. And, uh, and then it fits into its little pouch. 1997. Uh, you don't see too many of these around. So if you see one at the flea market, pick it up because it's a good investment. Now, just for the record, the pack axe is a copy of this folding axe made in Detroit, Michigan. Okay, for today's project, I pulled out this. Uh, this uh, beautiful little axe was made by Western Cutlery Company out of Boulder, Colorado. Can you see that there? They were big into making, uh, during the you know 50s and 60s, Western made some beautiful knives. Uh, very decorative you know a lot of them had the uh, leather handles and uh, they also made the kits uh, sets where it came with a knife and an axe uh, you got to remember in the 50s and 60s a lot of kids wanted these for Christmas things like that today you try and give a kid an axe for Christmas and they'll they'll call uh, protective services on you anyway um, look at let's take a look at what we have here we have a uh, kind of a cast aluminum type handle and it looks like it's sandwiched with some kind of uh, phenolic or or some kind of rubbery inset you know here then this was obviously painted black and then the rest of it you know it's just rusted over time you could see what it looks like over here it took a little bit of beating you know these were never meant as hammers but they were always used as hammers and uh so it took a little bit of beating on the edge here over here top looks pretty good uh the edge you know we got a little chip out of the tip there but otherwise, you can see the condition it's in. It'd be a fun project for today, for Friday. And uh, the, they did make a matching knife with this. I have one that's very similar, but let's clean this up, see what we can do with it. Okay, our post wire brush evaluation. Uh, not too many surprises here. I took all the paint out of there. It looks real nice in there. Wire brushed everything really good in there. A uh, little ding in the back here we have to address. You see that? Looks like it was dropped or something. Uh, this is real bad here. We got some corrosion. You see that's the worst kind of corrosion there, this over here on the back, but we'll address that. And then we got these big forging lines along the back of the. You see here? They are pretty deep, you know, so we got to see on both sides, you know, it was a uh, forge stamp. So uh, we're going to see what we're going to do with that. And uh, the rest of it's on the angle grinder now. And of course, we dulled the tip. That's what the last thing you saw. Uh, dulled the tip of this so that uh, we had to repair it and get that crack out, which we did. But now we'll resharpen it. But there's no sense in uh, keeping a sharp edge while you're doing us all this other work. So you take care of this first. And the last step will be uh, sharpening the axe.
Okay, now we're grinding. We're working our way down a bit. So we got rid of the forging lines on both sides here. We can clean that up with the belt sander. But look over here. This is with a worn 40 grit disc. And you can see here, see that pitting? That ain't going to fly, is it? You know? And I don't even know if we'll be able to save that Western motif or whatever or stamping. But we'll do our best. But like I said, you know, if you want to, I, I can't deal with that, you know? So it's got to come down. It's got to go below that. So to get below that, uh, you, you, sometimes you'll have to go with a new disc and keep, you know, trying a new disc until you finally get under the pits and then you'll finally come out with a nice shine. So let's try a new disc and see if we can get below that. Okay, the 40 grit wasn't doing it. You had to go, I had to go down to the grinding disc. Do! <laughs> you could see the grinding disc always leaves a bit of a chowded surface, but now, now we got to work our way up from the sanding grits and get all those those scratches out. Can you imagine that? So that you could see this takes time, but if you want a nice job, that's what you got to do. So let's get to the discs. I promised I would show this and uh, I figured this is about as good a time as any. I want to fill in that uh, Weston Cutlery Company, Boulder, Colorado, USA with some red, you know, uh, paint there. And uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to take some, my favorite, Regal Red, Rust-Oleum. And uh, I already scrubbed this now with uh, Comet and let it dry good. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to Fill these letters in with paint, not being too careful about, just fill them in with paint and then I'll show you the next step. Okay, now that you have the paint just filled in, you can see it's, it's all over the place there. Now what you're going to do is you're going to take a small swatch, a small piece of uh, paper towel like this, and then you're going to take some regular mineral spirits here, okay? And then you want to just dip it in slightly and dampen it in here. You don't want it uh, to be too, you know, dripping wet. You just want it uh, damp with the mineral spirits. And then what you're going to do is, and this is where you got to be real careful, you're going to place it on here like this, and you're going to gently wipe up and try and wipe up the paint without wiping up what's inside the letters. So you're just going to skim the top here, okay? And you see that's our first swipe, and you're going to do this a few times, back and forth, and then you don't swipe twice with the same, you fold it again this way like this, and now you have a new area here, okay? And then you're going to do the same thing, make sure it's a little damp, and then do it again and wipe it across. Now, again, you don't want it too wet. It's just got to be damp to get the outside paint off. Okay, we're going to do it again. Okay, now you can see it's getting better. And we're going to do this a couple times until all that's left. And, it, you know, don't get yourself covered with paint. But, uh, again, to roll it up to make sure it fits in that, that uh, section over there. We have a new piece here. Going to dampen it down a little bit again. Especially now that we're getting close. Uh... We don't want to make sure it's not dripping. You can always pat it over here to get off the excess. And we'll do it again, okay? I'm pressing this against here to conform it to make sure that's flat. And we're going to wipe it one more time very lightly. Okay, and you can see now when the bottom's coming out good, we just got to do a little bit more at the top. And uh, just keep doing that until all that's left is the red and the letters. Okay, now I'm very happy with the way that came out. You see that? Just the letters are filled in and I wiped off any excess that's around it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put on the furnace and leave it like this with the top facing up and then cover it with a little bit of foil and let that bake in there for, you know, about an hour or two and then I'll come back and show you what the uh, axe looks like done. Now you know my favorite part. Remember what this black beauty looked like before we started. And we're calling this project done. <clears throat> this is considered uh, Weston Cutlery's uh, flagship model. This was called the Black Beauty. And it was uh, like almost a top of the line axe that they made as far as, and look at, look how nice it came out. You know, I polished all over here like it should be. Uh, 
did the, the head real nice. I, I did it in a kind of a satin, but it still has a, a you know, almost a mirror to it. But it's, it, this is the kind that you could carry. You don't have to worry about scratches or fingerprints. Uh, did the top real nice. And of course the heel, look at that, you know, uh, just beautiful. And, um, I left this, this would normally came painted black, but it already has a darkened color from the forging. So I said, you know, that looks good enough. And, and of course we did the inside here. Uh, with the red paint, you can see by baking it, it, it actually settled that paint into there. That's that's just sweet, isn't it? What a nice axe this was. Uh, Western Cutlery. They made a ton of different uh, combinations and and uh, all types of, uh, of knives and and uh, axes and and sheets and uh, I just really enjoyed it. But this one here, this one, uh, just a, I really think it'll be a nice addition to the collection, you know. And uh, we did get out that little dimple in the back everything looks real nice came out real nice nice little project so in closing thanks very much for tuning in i hope you have a nice weekend take care now have a nice day bye bye and we are calling this project done now this uh axe was uh was called the uh western cutley western ba -ba -ba, ba -ba -ba.